Hello, greetings! So, for this lesson, we shall study the concept of plate tectonics. Now, the story of plate tectonics begins with Alfred Wegener or Alfred Wegener. He is a German meteorologist and geophysicist who noticed something when he looked at a map of the world. Now, Wegener or Wegener came up with a theory or a proposal called the Continental Drift Hypothesis or the Continental Drift Theory. Now, according to the Continental Drift Hypothesis or theory, Wegener stated that the continents had once been joined together to form a single supercontinent. Wegener proposed that the supercontinent which he called Pangaea began to break apart about 200 million years ago and form the present land masses. So that was his proposal of the supercontinent called Pangaea that's about 200 million years ago. Pangaea started breaking up. So that formed the present continents. Now, Alfred Wegener hypothesized that all of the modern day continents had previously been clumped together in a supercontinent which he called Pangaea, from the ancient Greek which means all lands or all the earth. Wegener published a paper explaining his theory that all the continental landmasses were drifting across the earth, sometimes plowing through the oceans and into each other. He called this movement continental drift. Now, Alfred Wegener came up with several lines of evidence to support his proposal or idea of continental drift. Now, one such evidence to support the continental drift theory was the evidence called the continental puzzle or the continental fit. Now, according to the continental puzzle or continental fit, the east coast of South America and the west coast of Africa look as though they would fit together like the pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. Now, with a bit of rearranging, most of the continents can be put together too. This was one of the first clues of continental drift according to Alfred Wegener. Now, if you will look at a map of the world, you will notice that most of the land masses, most of the continents would really fit together like pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. Now, Alfred Wegener noticed that the east coast of South America and the west coast of Africa look as though they fit together like pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. Now, isn't that fascinating indeed? So, the east coast of South America fits perfectly with the west coast of Africa. And Alfred Wegner noticed that. So, that's how he came up with this evidence called continental fit or the continental puzzle. Now, isn't that fascinating about the continental puzzle or continental fit? Now, sometimes geologists call this the geological fit. Now, the continental puzzle or continental fit or geological fit is the evidence which is the matching of large-scale geological features on different continents. And it has been noted that the coastlines of South America and West Africa seem to match up. Now, another piece of evidence to support 
the continental drift theory or hypothesis of Alfred Wegener would be the evidence of matching fossils. Now, what is this evidence called matching fossils? Now, fossil evidence for continental drift includes several fossil organisms found on different land masses. Now, Alfred Wegener noticed that the fossilized remains of this aquatic reptile called the Mosasaurus was discovered in two continents. The fossilized remains of the Mosasaurus was discovered in South America and the same type of fossil of the Mosasaurus was also discovered in Africa. So Wegner proposed that the organisms had lived side by side but the lands had moved apart after they were dead and fossilized. So he suggested that the organisms would not have been able to travel across the ocean. So he came up with this idea of a supercontinent called Pangaea. So that's the evidence of the matching fossils that would support the theory of continental drift. That fossils of similar types of plants and animals in rocks of similar age have been found on the shores of different continents, including Antarctica, suggesting that these continents were once joined together. So isn't that fascinating indeed? Now another line of evidence that would support the continental drift hypothesis is the types of rocks and structures. Now rock evidence for continental drift exists in the form of several mountain belts that end at one coastline only to reappear on a landmass across the ocean. Now, Alfred Wegener considered continental drift by noting the similarity of the rock strata and geological structures of the Appalachian and the Caledonian mountain belts of eastern united states and northwestern europe respectively so everybody kind of take a look at these uh, pictures of the mountain ranges of the appalachian and the caledonian mountain belts so similarly wegener investigated the continuity of the precambrian rocks and geological structures between South America and Africa. Wegener said that the rocks had formed side by side and that the land since moved apart. Mountain ranges with the same rock types and structures and ages are now opposite sides of the Atlantic Ocean. As you could see, in the pictures of the Appalachian and the Caledonian Mountains. So Wegener concluded that they formed as a single mountain range that was separated as the continents drifted. Now, another observation favoring continental drift hypothesis or theory of Alfred Wegener was the presence of evidence for continental glaciation. Striations left by the scrapings of glaciers over the land surface indicated that Africa and South America had been close together at the time of this ancient ice age. The same scraping patterns can be found along the coast of South America and South Africa. So this is a strong evidence to support the continental drift hypothesis or theory of Alfred Wegener. Now in spite of these lines of evidence, the hypothesis or theory of continental drift was rejected. Wegener could not provide an explanation of exactly what made the continents move. 
Now, after several years, new technology was developed and that led to findings which lead to a new theory called plate tectonics. Now, eventually, this continental drift theory led to the development of a new theory known as plate tectonics. Now, what is this theory of plate tectonics? Now, according to the plate tectonics theory, the planet Earth, especially the uh, layer of the Earth known as the lithosphere, is broken up into what we call as tectonic plates. The Earth has seven to eight major and many minor tectonic plates. Now, these tectonic plates, they ride on the asthenosphere, which is actually part of the upper mantle. And these tectonic plates, they exhibit movement. Now, plate tectonics is the theory that the Earth's outer shell or the crust is divided into several plates that glide over the part of the upper mantle called the asthenosphere. The asthenosphere, which is malleable or partially malleable, allows these plates to move around. Now, there are several major plates and these plates are named after the landforms found on them. The major plates include the North American plate, the Pacific plate, the Eurasian plate, the African plate, the Indo-Australian plate, Australian plate, Indian plate, South American and Antarctic plate. Now the largest plate is the Pacific plate at 39,768,522 square miles. Most of it is located under the ocean and it is moving northwest at a speed of around 2.75 inches per year. Now the movement of these plates are responsible for volcanic activity, earthquakes, and mountain building. And if you will notice in our diagram that most of the volcanic activity and earthquakes worldwide occur between tectonic plates called plate boundaries. Now, there are three types of tectonic plate boundaries. So these are the divergent boundary, convergent boundary, and transform boundaries. Convergent boundaries where plates move into one another, divergent where plates move apart, and transform boundaries where plates move sideways in relation to each other. So again, when we speak of plate boundaries, this is the region or the area between two tectonic plates. And there are three types of plate boundaries. So we have divergent boundaries, we have convergent boundaries, and transform boundaries. Now, a divergent boundary is a type of plate boundary wherein the two tectonic plates move apart. In convergent boundary, the two tectonic plates, they collide with each other. And in transform plate boundaries, the two tectonic plates, they slide past each other. So those are the types of plate boundaries. So we have divergent boundaries wherein the tectonic plates are moving apart. Convergent boundaries wherein the tectonic plates are in a collision course. And transform plate boundaries wherein the two tectonic plates are sliding or gliding past each other. Now let's go into the details of the three types of plate boundaries starting with divergent plate boundaries. Now divergent plate boundaries are also known as spreading centers. And these are boundaries wherein the two tectonic plates are moving apart. So as you could see in this animated illustration that the two tectonic plates are moving apart and this illustrates a divergent boundary. Now one good example of a divergent boundary is the so-called oceanic ridge. Now an oceanic ridge 
is an underwater mountain range formed by plate tectonics. This uplifting of the ocean floor occurs when convection currents rise in the mantle beneath the oceanic crust and create magma, where the two tectonic plates meet at a divergent boundary. So as you could see in this animated illustration, magma flows out from that opening and as magma flows out, it forces the two tectonic plates to move apart. So that's an oceanic ridge. And one good example of an oceanic ridge is the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. So this Mid-Atlantic Ridge, also known as the Mid-Oceanic Ridge, is an underwater mountain system formed by plate tectonics. It is the result of a divergent plate boundary that runs from 87 degrees north, about 333 kilometers south of the North Pole, to 54 degrees south, just off the coast of Antarctica. So, what happens now in the Mid-Atlantic Ridge or in a Mid-Oceanic Ridge? So, in a Mid-Atlantic Ridge or the Oceanic Ridge, convection cycles help push the magma up and this separates the two land masses apart. And this explains why South America separated from Africa. Okay, here is another illustration, an animated illustration showing what happens in an oceanic ridge. Okay, so here we have magma. So magma is forced out from that opening. And as the magma is forced out from that opening, it pushes the two land masses apart. So that's what happens in an oceanic ridge. And an oceanic ridge is an example of a divergent boundary. Now, if a divergent boundary occurs beneath the oceanic lithosphere, and we call this the oceanic-oceanic divergent boundary. So the rising convection current below, as you could see in the diagram, lifts the lithosphere producing a mid-oceanic ridge. And the mid-Atlantic ridge is a classic example of this type of plate boundary. The ridge is a high area compared to the surrounding seafloor. And because of the lift from the convection current below, this type of boundary creates new oceanic lithosphere. So an oceanic-oceanic divergent boundary creates new ocean floor as you could see in this animated illustration. Okay, so that's quite amazing indeed. Now, what about continental-continental divergent plate boundary? Now, continental-continental divergent boundary occurs beneath a thick continental plate as you could see in this illustration. Here, the thick continental plate is arched upwards from the convection current's lift, pulled in by extensional forces and fractured into a rift-shaped structure as you could see. Now, an example of a continental-continental divergent boundary is a continental rift. Now, what is a continental rift? Now, when spreading centers develop within a continent, the land mass may split into two or more similar segments, forming a continental rift. Now, one good example of a continental rift is the case of Iceland. Iceland is an example of continental rifting. Iceland has a divergent plate boundary running through its middle. And that is really fascinating indeed. So if you will look closely at Iceland, you could see the Mid-Atlantic Ridge 
crossing Iceland through its middle. So you have the North American plate side of Iceland and the Eurasian plate side of Iceland. And these two tectonic plates are moving in the opposite direction. So this means that Iceland is being pulled apart. Okay, so that is really interesting indeed. So if you are at the middle of that boundary, you will be in two tectonic plates at the same time. On one side, you have the North American plate and on the opposite side, you have the Eurasian plate. So that is the case of Iceland. Iceland is a perfect example of continental rifting. Now, another example of a continental continental divergent plate boundary are rift valleys or grabens. A rift valley or a graben is a linear shaped lowland between several highlands or mountain ranges created by the action of a geologic rift or fault. A rift valley is formed on a divergent plate boundary, a crustal extension or spreading apart of the surface. So in a rift valley, there are tensional forces. As you could see in this diagram, those two arrows are moving in the opposite direction. Those are the tensional forces. And when these tensional forces are strong enough to cause the plate to split apart, a center block drops between the two blocks at its flanks forming a graben as you could see in this animated illustration. The drop of the center creates the nearly parallel steeply dipping walls of a rift valley when it is new. That feature is the beginning of the rift valley. So that's how rip valleys are formed. So as you could see, again, in this animated illustration, those tensional forces, they pull the plates apart and the center block drops between the two blocks forming a graben. And the best example of a rift valley is the East African Rift Valley. The East African Rift Valley is a classic example of this type of plate boundary. The East Africa Rift Valley is in a very early stage of development. The plate has not been completely rifted and the rift valley is still above the sea level but occupied by lakes at several locations. Also, the Red Sea is an example of this type of rift valley. These are plates that have fully separated and the central rift valley has dropped below sea level.